Welcome back. In case you just joined us, this is Plots Politics, and we're moving straight to Edo State. Uh, the war over the Edo State governorship seat might not be over yet, as Osage Izeyamu doesn't seem to be ready to back down in his attempt to remove Godwin Obaseki from the Edo State governorship seat. The APC flag bearer has disclosed that he would pursue an eligibility case against the governor and his deputy, Philip Shaibo. But that would not contest Obazaki's victory, that he would not contest Obazaki's victory in the September 19 poll. Joining us to discuss this and other implication to this move is a political analyst, Olu Martins, and later on will be joined by the APC Publicity Secretary, Chris Azenbawe. Okay, good evening, Mr. Olu Martins. Good evening, Coyote and the Plus um, TV crew. Good to be on air again, at least this time around after the elections. <laughs> yes, I know I can understand that excitement because uh, I think you were so emphatic that you knew where the pendulum would swing. So you have the floor to tell us more about it. But let's look at uh, the response of um, Izeyamu. Uh, we waited for this response. We tried to speak to a good number of APC stalwarts and they said they are waiting for him to make his position known. And now we have seen his position. Basically, how do you describe that position, even when the president and every other person seem to have congratulated the governor-elect or the governor for the second time? It's OK. It is, first of all, let me appreciate the media as the fourth realm of the estate who has helped us consistently to put these very topical issues of electioneering in the front burner, more especially the activities of uh, PLUS Television. So we must uh, give you kudos for helping to consolidate on the gains of democracy. Uh, having said so, uh, Pastor Sage Izeyamo, it is well within his right to, to seek for any kind of redress that he wants to seek for as a human being and then as a flag bearer of a political party, albeit the all progressive Congress. However, uh, Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. So you're asking yourself, even when he wants to go through the route of the law, the expediency, the easiest way to gain legitimacy of any government is to have the support of the people. And that's why the Latin maxim says, vos populi, vos de, the voice of the people, had roundly in the just concluded September 19th election, spoken in very clear, lucid, and pellucid terms that whereas Sosage Ezeamu is not a bad person, but going forward for the next four years, their preference is for Mr. Godwin you know, Baseki. And ordinarily, when the elections were done, it was a QED, and the process was seen by all to be free and fair. And uh, the pastor himself has said that he isn't going to contest the electoral process, and that what he wants to contest is the eligibility process. You would have thought that if the people had spoken that they prefer Baseki, in spite of the high-level politicking that preceded the election, and uh, accusations and counter accusations, you will think that ordinarily as a pastor, he will let it be because after all, we are all like do um, people and he will follow what is now known as the good luck Ebele Jonathan um, roots, which is to congratulate the winner of the election and to wish him best in his attempt to transmogrify the state from what it currently is to what he wants it to be by his own vision. But, you know, sometimes in this country we are bad losers, and then because we also think that our courts have become part of our electionary process, okay. and we think that we can twist the process, blackmail the process, Olu Martins, uh, and see how we can come in through, you know, the back door as it has happened uh, in Imo State. But I can assure them um, that in this particular case, now, uh, the now, people have spoken, and by extension, God has spoken. So this... Um, new twist of attempting Olu to Martins. question the legibility of the, Olu the, the PDP. I, I can tell you that uh, your... Which is not new anyway. Um, Good. It's, it's 
is going to fail just like the same election has failed. So for me, the, the noble thing to have done is to have gone the good luck a better journalism okay. way. If Olu Martins, let me come in here because your opening statement, uh, I can tell you that uh, you have subtly threw a lot of tantrums, you know. Uh, you've used the word bad loser. You've used the word follow good luck Jonathan's way. We've used the word uh, by extension God has spoken. But like you said, it's not the first time. And why should he not try his luck? As we speak, you remember the story of Bayasa State. As we speak, you remember the story of Zamfara State. These were not the people that the people voted, but as we speak, they are the governors. So why can't he try his luck? I'm trying to avoid going into the merit of the case, but why should he not, you know, why should he be seen as a bad loser, using your word now? You know, like I said, there is, I began, my preamble was that as a bona fide citizen of the, or citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it was well within the right of Pastor Isaiah is is to seek legal redress, all right? It is well within his right to want to pursue it legally. Which is pre-election. Everything is legal, but not everything is expedient. At the end of the day, having been defeated by the ballot, it wouldn't make sense, proverbially speaking, to now try to come in by the bullets. The, the gap sufficiently has shown that 83,000 people, I mean, I'm 83, by a, a margin of 83,000, you would have thought that you would have said, you know what, let this matter rest. For peace and development, for wounds to heal, for there to be proper political reintegration, and then so that those states can move forward. How long have we been this? Now Network is uh, trying to interrupt this conversation. But if you can hear me while we're trying to reconnect you, I was just going to say that uh, uh, your choice of words, I know you sound more like a poet, but it is important that we make it clearer to our viewers, you know, that uh, if it doesn't come in through the ballot, it shouldn't come in by the bullet. I know that bullet does not refer to a bullet that comes from a gun. So you might need to make that clarity so that I'm not the one interpreting or explaining your statement. Also, we would also like you to still hear your perspective on the examples I gave. Are you saying that the governor, for example, of Bayelsa State should disown himself from being a governor? Are you saying that of uh, uh, Imo State should so stop being a governor? That's my question. And I require that you explain that to me. Well, Martins, you know, back in the okay. military, if you were not in civil society, we we'll say that back in the military, the military were not in government by the ballot. They were in government by the bullet. Talking about bullet in terms of the force, um, the sheer brute force. Uh, so the legitimate way to get into public office is that the people voted you into public office. Any other way is to attempt to subvert the collective will of the people. And this is without prejudice to what is happening, you know, what has happened in Zamfara and what has what is what has happened in what is happening in Imo State and what is happening in you know Bayelsa State. All right. Um, anybody by the law can decide to say, okay, I want to go and ask Abinishu whether you are even competent or whether you are qualified, you know, to be part of uh, I mean to contest for governorship Abinishu. I am just simply saying that we're Democrats, all right? And we should be able to, you know, as Democrats, be able to say, look, if the people who have the power, democracy, the government of the people, by the people, for the people, the majority will have their way, the minority will have their say. If the people have spoken, all right, and they say we are satisfied with God, you know, Basaki, and we want him for another four years, what is expected of Democrats is to look at the what the majority of people have said, and you say, you know what, where else I have the opportunity to do, okay. to go this route, I've decided, you know, just to allow, okay. you know, it go. Olu so Martins. that we can have peace, we can have respite, we can have focus, and then we can get the elections behind us, and okay. then, Olu Martins, you know, let the I'll man come do back the work to you. that he's been doing so excellently. I'll come back to you. Fortunately, we have uh, Mr. Chris Azebao eh, uh, joining us in this conversation. Mr. Chris, our time is spent. Let me quickly go straight to you. 
Uh, can you explain to us um, uh, the, what exactly your candidate is up to? Because we expected, or some people expected, not me now, that after the president has given his nod over the election, after the uh, Myla Booney led committee has given his nod, what is your candidate up to? Well, for the record, um, Pastor Sage Izeyamu was a uh, flag bearer for the governorship election on uh, September 19, 2020. Issued a public statement two days ago to the effect that uh, in obedience to the, the general wishes of the leadership of our party, that he has decided not to contest the results of the governorship elections at those states at the tribunal. So that, that spells out clearly what, what his position is and what the position of our party is. Okay, so what about the eligibility issue that is pursuing? Well, you see, uh, a lot of people seem not to be aware that the eligibility uh, issue was actually raised by his present party, the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria, in 2016, when he contested under the platform, on the platform of the APC. Unfortunately for the APC at that time, and unfortunately for the PDP, um, the matter could not be concluded because it ran out of time. So it was not concluded, concluded to, it was not brought to a conclusion. Now, what we have merely done is to resuscitate the issues that were raised by the, PT, by the PDP then. The fact that we're actually con, uh, using to contest this case in the courts hmm. were provided by his current party. And those are pre-election issues. You must realize that the election process involves issues before the election, during the election, and uh, sometimes immediately after the election. I agree. You put all this together that gives you a global picture of what happened. And now the issues that we have raised are the pre-election issues. We are not contesting the result in obedience to the leadership uh, wishes of our party. Okay, let, let and me... again, for the record, we have about 12 cases in court presently that were initiated by Mr. Obaseki, governor of the state, and his party. And those issues are still ongoing. So what is good for the goose is good for the gander. That is what is usually said. So if they are, in fact, as a matter of fact, as part of the statement issued by Pastor Sage Izeyamu, he said, for the sake of peace to reign in those states, so in addition to acceding to the wishes of the party leadership, he was also concerned about the welfare of the citizens of Edo State. So that informed his position and the position of our party. So the issues that, that are in court now were not generated by just the APC or Pastor Sage Izeyamu alone. Okay, I, I find that quite tricky, but I'll come back to you. Let me speak to Lou Martins. Uh, well, there, there's nothing tricky about it, actually. <laughs> the records are there. These cases are in the public domain. Okay. No, what I mean by tricky is that um, I'm not contesting the election. I'm speaking like he's trying to explain, uh, understand what he said. I'm not contesting the election. Yes. But because of the welfare of the people, I'm going to take advantage, so to say, of the case instituted by the party in power? Is that what you're saying? That's what I mean by tricky. OK, Mr. Chris, I'll, I'll, I'm losing you. Yeah, Sorry. I'll I'm come back you. to you. Let me, quickly get, let me get quickly get Martin's uh, perception. What did you all say? I was saying that uh, let me try and understand so that I will be clearer, and probably the viewers will be clearer too, that what I understand so far is that I am not contesting the outcome of the election, but because I care about the people, the welfare of the people, I'm going to stay on a case instituted by a party four years ago against this man who has now become a governor on this platform. Is it a case of taking advantage of what is on ground, or why don't I withdraw since I accepted the outcome? 
That's the clarity I seek. No, 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 no. Okay. For purposes of clarity. Okay. There were issues that is pre-election issues that were raised by Mr. Obaseki and his party, the PDP. In response to those, to, to those uh, issues, we also needed to defend our position. And the processes that we have initiated were in response to the actions, the legal actions that they took. So in order to achieve a balance, we couldn't just fold our hands and uh, allow them to run all over us. That's what we have done. OK. OK, <laughs> I, I, I'll come back to that. OK, Olu Martins, please, you have, I'm sorry, you have just one minute to make your final comment, especially right. to his response and uh, what this issue, how this issue is being viewed. Honestly speaking, just like, yeah, maybe to borrow your word, it's, it's, a bit, it's tricky for me to, I think the All Progressive Congress and you know, their candidates, they are trying to be clever by half. It's like six and half a dozen. What is in contention is that you are looking at we, any other means that you can use to oust. You couldn't do it through the you question the you know eligibility. So I'm confused myself. If you say that no, I beg to differ. I beg to differ on that. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Chris, I will allow you respond. I'm sorry. Let me make my. I beg to differ on that. Mr. Chris, I will allow you respond. I didn't interject you, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I have the floor. I'm sorry, sir. I have the floor. I have the floor. No, now, I will be the one sorry, to tell sir. you okay. you have the floor. Sure, Mr. Chris will respond. Sure, go ahead. Now, the, the go point, ahead. The, the point, I apologize. The, I apologize. It's, it's all right, sir. The point, the point I'm trying to make is the fact that if you have admitted that, you know what, the elections were free, fair, and credible, for which you were not going to contest the results of the election, I thought that you were, it would have been proper. No, we didn't say that. To, it would have been like, no, I, I, I read the press statement. In every election, there is no election that is that is Oh my god. Uh, the network is really, 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 really okay. Let me I, I understand. I think your point is uh, half clear, let me not say fully clear. Let me have uh, Mr. Chris if your network is okay because we have to round up the program now. Mr. Chris, what is the, the, the deference you have to his point? I guess we've lost the two gentlemen. In democracy, okay. we would allow the matters be, because we're all one of those. Because what the, for me, what the party is doing now, what APC is doing is a gamble. It's like when Yoruba say, EJ, EOJ, let's see whether we can, you know, gamble. If this works for us, maybe we can just, you know, come through. Okay, know, Olu Martins, just like it happened thank in you for that. Thank you for that, uh, your it's position. A and for me, for the peace of the state, I do not think that all of this gambling with the collective destinies of Edo people is worth it. And I do not even think that Thank you very much, Olu Martins. Let's so quickly listen to, go, to Mr. Chris. I don't, I, I don't see where it's going to go. I think that the people I think your spoken. position is clear. I think clear. that God has confirmed what the people have said. And I think that this victory, it's not another four years, has come to stay. And I know people are happy with the results of the election. Olu Martins, I think, I think your point is noted. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Chris, sorry, you have the floor now. And please, you have this for 60 seconds. Mr. Chris, you have the floor. Olu Martins, please, you may have, you may please excuse uh, Mr. Chris to respond. Mr. Chris, you have the floor now. Uh, as, as, I, as, I, as I said earlier, yes, thank you. As I said earlier, that we have said we will not contest the result of the elections at the tribunal does not equate or amount to the same thing as we accepting that the elections were free, fair, and credible. The main thrust, the main thrust of our position was that for the sake of peace, for peace to reign, so that our people can begin to move on with their lives and get back to normalcy, we will not contest the results of the elections. And then again, it is wrong for my brother, Mr. Lou Martins, to say that because we have lost the elections, and we are not contesting it at the tribunal, we have decided to pursue pre-election matters. That is not correct. The issue of the pre-election matters that went to court happened well before the elections. 
So it's not like we are not using that as an alternative to contesting the elections. So I needed to put that on record okay. and, uh, you know, uh, for, for, for posterity. Thank you so much. These issues went to court well before the elections. Thank you so much. We have that to is lead. why they are called pre-election matters. Okay. The issues border on a issue. Was this particular individual qualified? Okay, thank you so much, Chris uh, Zembawe, Publicity Secretary, APC at Two State for you. What we have done is not an alternative okay. to contesting the results in the tribunal. Once again, I say thank you to you. Anulu Martins, thank you for your own position on this issue. And we may have to end it now. Let the people interpret thank you. your positions. And to our viewers, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, very shortly, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take, especially on the first topic. As long as uh, living beings exist in the same space, there will always be conflict. But extra caution and discretion must be applied when the individuals involved are in leadership positions. How do we maintain peace and unity when our leaders, those we are supposed to emulate, fight fire for fire whenever there is a conflict of interest? We live in a civilized society, the head of a party, or in this case, the zonal head of a party should either be chosen by the overall head or through an affirmation by the subjects. And that is my take and a piece of advice to all the warring parties or all the peaceful parties. And that's my take on this issue. Plus Politics returns the same time on the same station. I remain yours truly, Coyote. Ladeidi, saying bye for now.